In this video, I'm going to show you how I run the best offense and the best defense in Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what I do on YouTube, basically my channel is about becoming a better Madden player in Madden NFL 21. And if you want to get more information about my channel, go ahead and just text me. My number is in the description. It's also in the top left-hand corner of your screen. But if you're looking to get better at Madden 21, go ahead and click that subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. All right, guys, so I am locking in here just in a mutt game, head-to-head -head game, and I figured that I would basically just record it and break down kind of what I'm thinking uh, and why I'm doing what I'm doing here uh, in a live online game here. So running bunch tight end, this is my newest offense that I just released in the last, um, not necessarily, I don't think it's been on a week or so, but um, this is the offense I've been running for about a week, maybe a little bit under a couple days here. And if you want to get the link to the full offensive ebook, that link is in the description of this video. But again, this is a phenomenal offense. Now, it's just such a simple offense to run. Uh, that's what I like about it personally is just how uh, just simplified down we've really been able to make offense in this game and really just made it to be able to really be able to if you master just a couple of plays and you run it really, really well, you're going to be able to be very, very successful with this offensive scheme. So um, one other thing that I want to talk about is I'm using the playmaker ability. I believe it's the best ability next to Gunslinger on the offensive side of the ball. Um, it really does help a lot with man-to-man -man coverage. Now, one of the other things I did talk about in a video that I did before um, on my channel is this single back trio and why this is such a good little formation to be able just to audible right down into it, use uh, Barry Sanders, or put someone in there that maybe have a little bit better trucking. Um, and you'll see that we'll go to that from time to time. We'll also go to some of these full house formations. Uh, one of my favorite things to do is to be able to basically just come out in this right here, this little strong eye um, tight formation here. And basically, we're just going to try to come out and run the ball. That's really the whole entire goal. Now, again, if this is your first time visiting my channel, the whole goal here is that you would walk away um, as a better Madden player. So if you have questions, you can always text me. Again, my number is 812-216-3644. And the offense that you're going to watch me run today is the bunch tight end, the run heavy playbook. Um, I believe the run heavy playbook has the best bunch tight end in Madden 21. But I also believe the 46 playbook, which is what you're getting ready to see me jump into, is my defensive ebook. Now, the 46 defensive ebook, in my opinion, is 100% the best defensive ebook in the entire game. And the reason why the 335 is such a good defense to run is because of the personnel that you're able to get on the field, the balance that you're able to have on defense, the ability to adjust to really anything that the offense is doing, to have all the coverage shells at your disposal, my opinion, creates a really, really unique and really effective defense for you. So that being said, on the first drive there, really what I was trying to do, I noticed he was playing a lot of drop zone coverage, drop zone coverage, drop zone coverage. But I was just running basically PA cross. Uh, he was running a lot of Tampa 2. Um, he kind of usered the crossing route, which is what most people will do, because if you don't use the crossing route, like pretty much everything else is open. So obviously he ended up deciding that he wanted to take away the crossing route, which is completely fine. I just checked down, you know, took my check down, took my check down, took my check down. And then obviously we were able to, um, you know, able to uh, have a lot of success there. So uh, on defense, what we're going with here, um, I'm going to have to burn a timeout. But really what, I'm, what I've got on defense working right now um, is basically just a really, really fast defense. I uh, have over 90 speed at every position on the field right now. i got some sprinters out there. got some people that just have some, you know, some really, really good speed on the field. So really excited about that. And really what I'm going to do is start with some man-to-man -man coverage. Um, this is kind of becoming my go-to uh, base way to play people. Um, and it looks like he's going to run a little 0-1 trap there. We're going to be able to box that up. The beauty of the 3-3-5 wide defense is the fact that it just does a really, really good job, in my opinion, of you know just basically being able to easy, being adaptable, um, flexible, moldable. You can do a lot of different things with this defense, and in my opinion, it is the best defense in the entire game, especially because of how effective um, the personnel that you can put on the field really is. Uh, that, to me, makes it one of the most effective uh, schemes in the entire game. So right here, um, it's going to go down quick through. And we have three one-step-ahead corners. 
and we have uh, Acrobat on all of those corners as well. So they're going to be able to play good in man coverage, but they're also going to be able to play really, really effectively uh, in zone coverage. And I'm actually working kind of under the hood a little bit here um, on a nickel normal update to uh, the defense here, just kind of, you know, basically trying to kind of lab that up a little bit and just see what I can do here. Um, and right there, I did not think he was going to throw it right at me. He ends up falling out of bounds there. But like I said, you know, first drive, and I've talked about this a little bit before, but really the, my goal on my first drive in a Madden game is to simply get my audible set up, get my personnel set up, not give up any big plays, uh, and really to just kind of see, you know, can really I'm asking the question, uh, can he beat man-to-man? -man? If he can't beat man-to-man, -man, then I'll just stay in man-to-man -man all game. If he can beat man-to-man, -man, you know, then obviously that means I have to adjust a little bit here. Uh, right there, I was probably just a step, uh, one step behind instead of one step ahead right there. Uh, he ends up catching me with that slant route from the trip set. But, you know, typically what I'm going to do is I'll stay in man coverage, you know, th with a three to one ratio. Um, so I'm going to jab, I'm going to jab, I'm going to jab, and then I'm going to right hook, basically. So you're going to see man coverage, man coverage, man coverage, and then you might see a man blitz, or you might see a zone coverage or something like that, just to kind of uh, mix some things up. So, for example, I'll come into this right here, right, uh, Mike Blitz 3. Uh, but instead of press coverage, now you're going to see shaded coverage outside. Uh, just put a little pressure on him here um, and just kind of see where he's going to go. And there you see we end up getting the sack there. So that's a jab, 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 right hook, right? Jab, 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 right hook. Coverage, coverage, coverage. Then blitz. Now on this third down, what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to go with a more, with a more uh, conservative approach, going more coverage here. Um, and instead of dropping uh, my most tackle on a spy, I'm going to drop a purple zone shaded at 20 yards. I actually was supposed to go get that running back. I don't know how that running back was so wide open. Um, that must have been a miss on my, my man coverage adjustment. All right, so pistol bunch tied in. He's coming out here. Uh, and we're going to go with a little bit of a right hook. Uh, we're going to go all out here, shaded coverage down. If he, if he gets a one-play touchdown, he's got it. We're really trying to, you know, just get after it a little bit here, um, and he's going to roast us. Now, D'Angelo Hall doesn't have um, – he, he, I don't know what happened on that play. I'm trying to find out where D'Angelo Hall was. Okay, he was a safety, and I don't know why – oh, he was a man coverage because we ran Mike Blitzo. Oh, that's why. Okay, that makes more sense. So, yeah, the slot receiver got us on that. So, good drive by him, and – now we got to go do our job and score. Now, really, in a Madden game, in my opinion, you know, the first drive, all you're trying to really accomplish, which we probably shouldn't have blitzed on that last drive there on that last play, we should have probably just stuck with our um, stuck with our man-to-man -man defense. But um, but for what it's worth, um, what we're going to roll with here is we've got to adjust a little bit to that. So really, ideally, on the first drive, what you're really trying to do is you're trying to hold your opponent to three points. Uh, we weren't able to do that. So that's okay. That's a loss for the defense. But at the end of the day, you know, it is his first drive. Gave me an opportunity to kind of see what he's going to do. And it looks like it's a general idea. Um, you're going to see he's going to, when he has a crossing route, that's where he's going to want to go. So what, now that I know that, you know, I can kind of adjust and adapt um, accordingly. So offense has got to do its job. And this is why I personally don't like to get the ball first because I feel like you put a lot of pressure on your offense on the second drive of the game because it's such a make-or-break drive, especially if your defense can't get a stop. Um, uh, right here, let's see, the tight end. I can't get the tight end delay feed to go out. There we go. And we'll just take our delay. Right there, I could have done a couple things. I mean, I had a couple of different routes open, but I felt like it was best – just for, you know, the way the routes were kind of developing on the play to, you know, get the ball out of my hands quick to the tight end, let him make something happen, uh, and then just move forward. So he's running, I think he's running a lot of cover four. Um, that's kind of my knee jerk, um, you know, reality here. Let's see what you watch what this corner does here on the left side. Um, and it looks like he's in that cover two again. Uh, we're going to aggressive that just so we don't get picked. We're able to catch that. Now, he's in cover two. So if he's in that cover two again right here, um, you should see we should be able to get a one-play touchdown here on the right side. We'll see if this works or not. But if he is in that cover two style defense and he is in that cover two, Tyreek Hill over the top, and that's a terrible pass lead by Rich Gannon. That should have been a wide-open touchdown, but Rich Gannon just totally blew that. I wanted to get that outside. I didn't get it outside of him. But he's. I think he's in a lot of cover two. He... 
He might he might be. I know he was in cover two last drive, so we're gonna run the same thing again. But this time, instead of smart routing Tyreek, we're just gonna let him do his thing. Um, and here he runs some hard flats. Barry Sanders almost gets us into some really really big trouble. And see, this is where I feel like all of the pressure is on your offense, right? If you if your offense doesn't perform on this drive, like it's a massive massive deal. Um, so anyway, all that to say, uh, we need a first down. And we get one right there with scary Terry McLaurin. Now, one thing I'm going to try here, because I know he's going to be in zone coverage, uh, I'm going to try this playmaker. But instead of playmakering it that way, and that was an absolute laser. I probably threw that a little bit too late. Um, but I was trying that playmaker up just to see if I could get that, and I was able to. Now, this is actually a really interesting position for him to go into. Because we're up by one possession, but there's only 55 seconds left. So there's really not a ton of time, but he does have two timeouts. So you got to think if you're in his shoes, like the way you would play this is you would definitely try to go down and score. You would try to get three points. So that's where as a defense, you want to know that going into it. If you can get a defensive stop here, it would be absolutely huge for your defense. So that's kind of the game plan going into this. But And again, guys, if you want to get the offense that I'm running in this game, that link's in the description. If it just release the offense. And if you want to get the defense I'm running, that link is also in the description. So my 335 defense is in there. And excuse me, and my bunch, um, my bunch offense, my bunch tied in. All right, right here. And you think he's going to get us. He must have route tech on that guy. Uh, right there, that was just bad defense by me. He got me, he quick snapped me. Um, that was a product of me just not being prepared. Uh, what we're probably going to do, um, just because of the way he's running his offense, uh, is we're going to go to a Mabel coverage. We're going to go a little bit of a zone coverage here just to kind of change it up. Show man coverage. You see here it looks exactly like man coverage, but now we're in zone and just kind of force him to kind of have to um, – and there I was hoping he would – I was hoping he would – I fake him and he would throw it to me. But we're just trying to kind of force him to do some different things. Uh, we got to get our adjustments down, and we're just not doing that right now, uh, and that's really killing us. We're, we're not getting our adjustments in. Pre-snap, and that's killing us right there. Let's get this running back. We got the running back. We got him. We got him. We got him. It's a huge sack right there. Now, he take a timeout. Um, if he didn't take a timeout, I was going to take a timeout because that brings up a critical third down and five. And this third down and five is huge. Um, let's see what he does here. I'm going to shade coverage outside and shade coverage down here. Uh, and just kind of watch the running back. He throws all the way across his body and misses the crosser. And that was actually the, probably the correct read. But that's a very, very difficult throw. Now, right here, this is really a big decision by him because he's going to – he could potentially – now, remember what he went to um, – just remember what he went to um, last time on on this real quick. So, I'm in Mike Blitz 3. Remember what he went to? He went to that slant route, so I'm just watching, 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 watching. And I need that pick. There we go. Defense gets a huge stop. That's what I was talking about. So, now we come back. We get the stop, and we have the ball. This, you don't have to score a touchdown here. Three points is absolutely huge. So we're going to go right into my favorite play from Bunch Tight End here, and that's the curl flat corner with the block and relief shot to the running back um, and see how we can do here. And he is going to go into cover two, and we just get the worst possible thing. Oh, man, that's what we call bad. Um, I've talked a lot about this, and I think I talked about this in a video I did prior. Whenever you run this offense, um, it's the best offense in the game, in my opinion. It's darn near impossible to just completely stop. Uh, I have never been completely stopped in this offense. I think maybe one time I had a tough game uh, so far. But what I was going to say about that is the one issue that you can run into sometimes with that route that corner route is you have to wait for it to clear the zones a little bit. And so if you're not careful, you'll end up waiting, 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 waiting. Um, and then what will happen, and now he's – see see, see now how it's flipped? Now he's in a position to be able to go get three points before half, all because of a throw out of sack. So that's, you know, that's to me, you know, a big deal. Now what I like to do in this situation, I don't know what handedness his kicker is going to be. Now he's right-handed. I have two timeouts. I'm not going to go ahead and call them yet, but I am going to try to just block this kick, just see if I can get in here and make a play, make it hard on him a little bit, and we end up getting roughing the kicker, which sucks, but – it is what it is. So he could take a first and 10 on the 21, or he could just take his three points. He'll probably end up just doing that. So what I can do now is I'm going to have at least, you know, I can give myself one play. Um, so I could basically, you know, I, I could do a couple different things. I could run a post route. I could try to get a wheel route off, something like that uh, late. It depends a lot on what, you know, it where he kicks this. 
and he actually did the smart thing. So we're only going to really have one play, realistically, um, and that's okay. So we're only going to have one play here. So I'm going to go PA boot over, but we're going to do a little twist on it. And essentially what I do with this twist is we're going to we're gonna run two crossing routes, um, and then we're going to basically um, we're going to double team this guy on the outside. We're going to block and release the running back here. Actually, we're going to put him on a ghost route. And then we're going to take McLaurin, and we're going to put him on a post route and snap it right there and just see what we can see. And I had him. I totally had circle wide open. But, again, it's that, you know, you, you don't have all day to throw it. Had I had a little bit more time in the pocket, that probably would have been a touchdown. Unfortunately, it was a sack. And it's just like last drive. Had I had just a split second longer in the pocket, I probably would have got at least a field goal, maybe a touchdown on that play. Instead, it's a throw out a sick pick, throw out a sack pick, and puts him right in field goal position. So that's some of the things that you have to think about. When you're in the pocket, you have to do a good job. If they get an instant shed, like he's getting a lot of instant sheds because he has abilities on his defensive line. And, of course, right here we might give up a, a kick return. He's getting a lot of instant sheds. And so that's where I have to be smart as a pocket passer and say, okay, I might have to take a sack, right? I might have to take a sack. I might have to do something, um, you know, because I can't just say – I can't. It, it's not seven on seven, right? Um, the defensive players get paid too. So that's just some, you know, bad, bad uh, management of the pocket by me in my opinion. Uh, right here, he catches us again. Um, it seems like his favorite thing in the world to do is to just come out and just run the play stock. So what we're going to start doing – um, just to kind of help that a little bit is we're going to come out and we're just going to run some cover four um, just to see, you know, just to see how this does against him. And, of course, he's going to run it. There you see there's that user blow up uh, from the 335. Best run defense, in my opinion, against the shotgun is this nickel 335 defense um, and the way that we run it. So, uh, anyways, Michael Vick going to come out and we'll see what he does here. Now, we should see some slant routes. We should see some crossing routes, things like that. So, there's your drag. There's your drag. There's that route right there, and that's sh that should have been an interception. Um, I put my guys on 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 like ball and air to play receiver because when they throw it and I'm in position, you know I can kind of manually click onto the player and obviously get the interception. So anyway, right here, uh, third and twelve, and just gonna try to go with that cover four. And the reason we're going cover four on third and twelve is just because of you know the way he's been playing, just quick snapping every play. So. Uh, roll out of the pocket. There we go. Send the spy. And uh, that was, a, I don't know what he did to that running back, but that was interesting. I don't know what route that running back was on. I think he was on some kind of block and release route, but good read by him. Um, okay, so now hopefully what we can do, and quick snap once again. There's the run defense. Yeah, so, I mean, it, you know, really, you know, again, you've got to know, and this is my personal opinion, that's why, as a defensive player, one tip that I have for you is you never, ever, ever want to call your play uh, before the offense. You always want the offense to call their play first um, because there's no shot clock on you until they call their play. So the reason that that matters is it lets you know if they do anything really crazy, right? So you can always see what formation they're going to be in, what their base formation is, what their base personnel is. And if you have the reps against this, if you run this defense long enough, you'll get kind of familiar with how your defense will line up against certain formations and how you should audible accordingly uh, based on that. So right there, he threw it into four of my players, and somehow none of us picked it off. Um, but we did get the stop. So now it forces him to have to consider, does he want to take a field goal um, or does he want to go for a touchdown? Now he's coming out in field goal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come out and cover four drop. And the reason why is I just I want to give him his three. I'd much rather him have three right here. Three is a big win for the defense. We get the ball back. You know, realistically, like if we go down and score, um, yeah, he'll still have one more possession. But we're now in a lot more control. And the pressure has swung back to us a little bit on the offensive side of the ball. But not a ton, um, as you can see right there. So we're going to jump in here on the offensive side of the ball. Really quickly, once again, another reminder – if you have any questions about any of the stuff that you see um, in today's game, the um, my my number is in the description or is in the uh, top left hand corner of your screen. So, anyways, um, okay, so we're gonna come out. He's coming out now in three three five, which is interesting. Um, what we're gonna do def offensively is we're just gonna stay with PA boot over, um, and we're gonna try to actually try to catch him. 
in a cover two shell here. Um, he could totally be getting us here, but right? he's showing that cover two, and he's certainly in it, and that's an absolute laser. But unfortunately, Rich Gannon, I think that's the third throw this game that he has blown for us. Uh, more than likely, we're probably going to be getting either the new Sean Watson or the new Tom Brady because I'm so over Rich Gannon overthrowing it. Um, we're going to try to catch him again. We probably shouldn't go back to it here, but we are going to go back to it just to kind of see what he's going to do. And it leaves this drag wide open to Terry, to Scary Terry, Scary Terry McLaurin. Um, this, I, I think the playmaker truly is, you know, one of the best abilities in the entire game. Um, it's just so hard to stop. And one of the things I also like to do is use this little angle route uh, to the running back. And that little under pressure and accurate was probably the worst, worst possible thing that could happen. And we make the mistake here. I mean, this is just bad all around. Um, bad, 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 bad game management. This is where you have to have patience. In a Madden game, it's really easy to get in a hurry. And what you want to try to avoid, you want to be um, intentional, not hurried. And what happened right there was I was hurried, right? I wanted to get out and I want to get in my play. And the reason that that's an issue is because now what has happened is now, you know, I don't have now I don't have a third time out because I called my play too quick. Right here, Deshaun Jackson, easy read. That's my favorite play in the game. Um, so, you know, we just have to recover from that. But that's just something that's a little thing that makes a huge, huge difference um, in terms of how, you know, how everything's going to go uh, for me. So... Anyway, that's just a little, you know, quick tip there. All right, right here, I'm going to go with a motion cross or across here. Um, and we'll see how this goes here. And there's that playmaker underneath with a little double juke. That double juke is so underrated. A lot of people, I think, I've actually been thinking about even personally for myself switching to conservative just because I don't do it enough anyway. Um, but that double juke is super, super effective. So... Um, let's see here real quick. Got a curl flat corner if I can find that play. That is an outrun. Okay, perfect. Um, but, yeah. So, three three five defense, best defense in my opinion. Um, if ran correctly, it can pretty much stop any offense. It's one, it's one of the only defenses that truly does um, pretty much take care of any way that people want to play offense in this game. So, that's one option. Uh, bunch tight end is not the only offense you could use, but in my opinion, it is certainly the best as you see there, and, and, and Rich Gannon's killing me. One of the, his release, and, 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 and those of you that know Madden would know that if that was Brett Favre, and that's where I've almost thought about put, picking Brett Favre back up, Brett Favre can just put the ball in so many tight windows. Like, it's insane. The problem with Rich Gannon is he's really, really good because he has Hot Rod Master, but the biggest issue is sometimes he'll miss throws like what you just saw me miss on the sideline. Like, the ball will just kind of, like, hold up in the air a little bit too long, and that's a big issue for the offense. You need to be able to complete that ball with confidence, um, in my opinion. So that's one of the biggest uh, challenges with, with using Rich Gannon. But at the end of the day, you know, it does have its perks as well. All right, so right here we're trying to get in the end zone. Um, let's see here. We're going to get out of the pocket. And that was probably a stupid decision. We tried to just we tried to get out of there and throw that route on the sideline. Um, was probably a, probably a pretty pretty dumb thing to do. Uh, one of the things that I actually really really like right now um, that I haven't talked a ton about is putting the running back on a block and release. And the reason why that matters is because these block and release routes are super glitchy now with the new patch. They basically updated them a little bit. Um, and right there, that was a great play by Darren Waller. Rich Gannon overthrew it by a mile, and uh, and and Waller went up and picked it up for us. Uh, right here, I'm going to go to a little bit of a, a little bit of a red zone setup, and we're going to put Waller on that little slant in. And Tyreek Hill gets the touchdown. That's huge. That's a huge, 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 huge drive for us. That's a big-time drive. Go down, get seven. So we're going to go up by eight. So what it really means is he, he can come down and tie this game. If he, you know, if he locks in, goes down, gets a good drive, he can tie this game up. So do know that. But offensively, we did what we did. You know, we did what we needed to do. There's no way we can lose this game 
on this drive. So defensively, we can play a little bit more aggressive. He's got to play really, really, really passive because all of the pressure has now swung to him. Because if he goes down and scores, like, that's not a big deal to us. It's a huge deal, you know, like if he gets a turnover. He gets a turnover here. If we get a turnover defensively, um, this thing is pretty much cooked. So um, that's kind of the, the mentality. So what you're going to see on my defensive side is we're going to pick up the pace just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to go to a setup I really, really like out of the cover four uh, defense here. Uh, it's basically just two yellows, two light blues, and then it's, you know, basic. Because what we're trying, we're noticing a lot of crossing routes, a lot of slants. And there you go. And that was, I mean, that was the interception that we were looking for right there. I mean, it was right there for us. And so you'll see, we're going to go to some of that setup a little bit more. Um, in my opinion, this cover four setup is really, 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 really good. Um, and the reason why is because uh, basically, uh, I can't, hold on one second. I got to get these guys. And I didn't get the adjustments off, unfortunately. There we go. So basically the reason that cover four adjustment is so good is because it's one it's it doesn't automatically like it doesn't necessarily like negate the necessity for um slay rounds. Like it doesn't necessarily take slants away, but it does a great job at like deterring, you know, people from running the slants. There we get the SWAT from Chase Young, and now that's really gonna back him up. Fourth and seventeen. Ball on his 15-yard line, and you're seeing this defense. Like I said, once you get in a position where your defense can kind of, you start to kind of know what they do, this thing, this defense really, really, really could eat. Uh, I mean, it's just a good defense uh, for that. So, anyway, right here, we're trying to stop him. Uh, we're trying to basically, I'm playing the sticks all the way. We're just trying to watch for curl routes, anything that he might do. Uh, obviously, Vic's going to scramble out of the pocket. Uh, he's going to roll out, and we get the sack. Great job by the defense. Now, right here, this is actually a really good – and see, he's going to go ahead and quit out, so we don't even have to worry about it. But what we're going to do there is just basically run the ball, kick our field goal, and play defense again. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to get my full defense, that's in the description. If you want to get my full offense, that is also in the description. Also, text me if you have any questions or you would like a free sample of the defense.